Hello everyone, welcome to the Tactic YT channel. In this video, we are going to teach you everything you need to know about basic settings. This tutorial will be presented in two or three parts. In the first part, we will cover the first 16 items. So if you are having trouble with basic settings, be sure to stay with us until the end. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel so you can be notified of the next part of this tutorial and our future videos. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's dive into the basic settings. The first option is Aim Assist. As the name suggests, Aim Assist helps you aim. But what happens when it's set to On? When this option is turned on, your aim will slightly lock onto an enemy when they cross your crosshair. You might be wondering what's the point of that? Have you ever noticed that when an enemy is running away and you're trying to track them with your aim, if you can keep your aim slightly close to the enemy, Aim Assist will automatically lock your aim onto them and all your shots will hit them. Now, if you want to better understand the difference between these two modes, play two matches. In one, turn off Aim Assist, and in the other, turn it on. That's when you'll realize how much it helps you. Let's move on to the next option, Quick Run From Button. As the name suggests, this option allows you to run quickly while your character is prone. If your character is prone and you set this option to on, as soon as you push the joystick all the way forward, your character will stand up without pressing the jump button and start running. However, if you set this option to off and your character is prone, no matter how far you push the joystick forward, your character will not stand up until you press the jump button. I highly recommend setting this option to on. Here's why. In on mode, you can also perform the off mode. How? You no longer need to push the joystick all the way forward. If you push the joystick slightly forward, your character will crawl. And if you push the joystick all the way forward, your character will stand up without pressing the jump button and start running. Let's move on to the next option, Joystick Auto Sprint. This option affects our joystick. When it's turned on, a button is added to our joystick. If you push the joystick all the way forward, this button turns yellow. When it turns yellow, your character's sprint will lock, and even if you remove your finger from the joystick and screen, your character will continue to sprint automatically. However, when you turn this option off, this button disappears from the top of the joystick, and no matter how far you push the joystick forward, your sprint will no longer lock. When you remove your finger from the joystick, your character will stop. There is also another option for automatic sprinting. Pressing this button will make your character start sprinting automatically. Let's move on to the next option, Fixed R-Fire BTN. This option is related to the R-Fire BTN for camera rotation option, so we'll explain them together. This is especially important for two-finger and three-finger players, so pay close attention. The Fixed R-Fire BTN affects the button shown in the video. It doesn't affect the other button used for shooting. Now let's see how it works. When you set it to Fixed Position, the R-Fire BTN for camera rotation option becomes available, allowing you to adjust the fixed position of the button. In fixed position mode, the button stays fixed wherever you place it on your HUD. However, if you set R-Fire BTN for camera rotation to off, you can use this button to aim and shoot, but you can't move your aim with it. On the other hand, setting it to on lets you aim, shoot, and move your aim by dragging the button. So far, so good, right? Now, if you set it to track fire, the R fire button for camera rotation option becomes disabled. You can no longer manipulate the movement of the button. What does this mean? This option allows you to aim, shoot, move your aim by dragging the button. However, it also adds a feature. The button appears wherever you place your finger on the screen which can be quite inconvenient. I highly recommend keeping this option on fixed position. The R fire button for camera rotation setting depends on your HUD and play style, so adjust it accordingly. 
Alright guys, let's move on to the next option, left joystick mode. This option is related to the fixed virtual joystick display position option. When we set this option to fixed position, the next option becomes disabled, and we can't manipulate the joystick in any way. Now let's see what they do. When this option is set to fixed position, it fixes the joystick wherever you place it on the HUD. You can only move your character by dragging your finger on that area. In this mode, you can also use the top or bottom of the joystick to move the camera sideways. Guys, when you select the left screen control option, the fixed virtual joystick display position option also becomes available. When this option is set to left screen control, set the fixed virtual joystick display position option to off. You can then tap anywhere on a designated area of your phone to make the joystick appear and move your character. But if you set this option to on, it will keep the joystick fixed in the position you set it. You can still move your character by touching anywhere on the screen. However, the sideways camera movement mode will be disabled. This is the difference between this option and fixed position. I recommend keeping the left screen control option on and the fixed virtual joystick display position option off. All right, guys, the next option is auto open doors. When this is set to on, any door you approach in the game will open automatically. This can be a huge advantage. However, if this option is set to off, you will need to use the open door button when you approach a door. This can be time consuming and could get you killed if an enemy is behind you. All right, guys, let's move on to the next option. Release R fire button of shotgun to hip fire. This is a very useful option for players who use the R fire button to shoot shotguns in hip fire mode. If this setting is off, you will fire once every time you tap the right fire button. However, if this setting is on, the shotgun will fire when you lift your finger off the fire button. This means you need to hold down the button and release it at the same time to fire the shotgun. All right, guys, let's move on to the next option. Hide prone button, hold crouch to prone. When this option is set to off, the prone and crouch buttons appear as two separate buttons on the HUD. However, when this option is set to on, the prone and crouch buttons become one button. To make your character prone, you need to hold down the crouch button for a few seconds. All right, guys, let's move on to the next option, continuous grenade throw. As the name suggests, this option affects the grenades in your backpack. When this option is on, you can throw grenades one after another at your enemies. However, if this option is off, your character will automatically switch back to your gun after each grenade throw. I recommend keeping this option on, as it can be very useful in situations where you need to throw grenades quickly.
The next option I want to talk about is the ADS button for rotation option. When you set this option to on, as soon as you hold down the aim button that I showed you in the video, moving your finger on this button will also move your aim. Note that this button is different from the R fire button and is a separate button. However, when you set this option to off, you will no longer be able to move your aim by moving your finger on the button. All right, let's move on to the next option, quick weapon switch. This option is for when you want to switch between your primary and secondary weapons. When this option is on, it allows you to switch weapons faster. However, if it is off, it will take longer to switch weapons. I recommend keeping this option on, as it can be very useful in situations where you need to switch weapons quickly. Alright, let's move on to the next option, Fast Scope Switch. Guys, when you turn this option on, a button is added to our HUD, which I showed you in the video. Now, what does this button do? Some people in the game use multiple scopes. For example, they have two scopes on two of their guns, and two more scopes in their backpack. To avoid having to open your backpack and change scopes all the time, when you activate this option, as soon as you click on this button, by tapping on any scope you want, your scope will be swapped with the scope on your gun. All right, guys, let's move on to the next option, the perspective teammate option. This option is very popular. Let's see what it does. Guys, if you turn this option on, you will be able to see your teammates through walls as blue outlines. And if you turn this option off, you will no longer see those blue outlines of your teammates through walls. I recommend that you keep this option on because it will let you know the exact location of your teammates. The last option we want to talk about in this video, guys, is the split throw button option. This option has no effect in Battle Royale mode and is currently inactive. This option is related to the grenades section. Let me show you this option which is available in multiplayer mode and explain how it works. When you turn this option on, it will split your grenades into two sections in multiplayer mode, allowing you to easily switch between them. However, when you turn this option off, all your grenades will be grouped into a single button and you can choose between them by pressing this button. All right guys, we have reached the end of part one of this video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found the information useful. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments section, and I will answer them as soon as possible. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel so you can be notified of part 2 of this tutorial and our future videos. Thank you for your attention. See you in part 2.